Hello and welcome to this week's Wednesday One Shot. I'm going to switch things up a little bit from the seriousness of the mental health stuff that I've been talking about over the past month. I would like to go a little bit more into the profession that I'm in and discuss something that I get asked the most questions about. I actually am making this for my website so that when brides book me if they want to see a more instructional video on questions that I get asked all the time that maybe this would be helpful to them, things that they haven't thought of or you know wanting to prepare for their wedding day to kind of put themselves in the situation because there's so much going on that you don't even have time to think about this. A lot of makeup artists have kind of lost momentum over the past few years because of the pandemic and so I feel like weddings are now starting to get back into the groove of things. People are starting to plan bigger weddings or the ones that they had planned before the pandemic are now rescheduled for these dates so they're catching up. So it seems like all of a sudden we went from crickets to so many weddings <laughs> which makes me happy because not only do I love attending weddings, I love being a part of them and just having that moment with the bride behind the scenes on her special day. It's gonna give me chills just talking about it because I get so excited. Brides do have a glow that you cannot explain. So let's just dive into the do's and don'ts or just the tips of what advice I can give brides on their wedding day and the preparation leading up to it from a seasoned makeup artist. One of the main things I get is, should I have a facial done before the wedding? If it's a facial you've been getting for a really long time and you know exactly how your skin is gonna react to it, then maybe a couple days leading up to it, you could. But I would caution against it. I would say, get a few leading up to your wedding day. That way your skin is at its glowiest and at its best. I don't recommend getting one a couple days prior to your wedding or the day before your wedding if it's something you've never done before. You just don't know how your skin's gonna react. Sometimes. Getting a facial can work up pimples because there's all of that dirt and grease and oils underneath the surface of your skin that is now brought to the surface and extracted. So just be careful because all of that can work some stuff up. And you don't want your makeup artist to have to try to cover up a textured pimple that has been extracted. It's even easier to cover up a pimple if it's just still in the pimple form and it's just a bump on your face as opposed to a crater. Once it's got texture, that's pretty tough. But if it's just a little bump, you could just put some foundation over it and then some translucent powder and then you won't really see it. And then your photographer can definitely boop, edit that right out. Try to be diligent about drinking lots of water every day because nothing makes your skin glow more than being hydrated. Also, if you drink, you probably don't want to be drinking very heavily the week of your wedding. I know it's hard to... <laughs> hard to say because back when I got married I was drinking so I was like woo oh, I'm stressed out wine but it, if you can avoid it uh, I would because that can do a number on drying your skin out just making it look a little pasty maybe not as much color in your face if you were just hydrating and taking good care of yourself so keep that in mind if you can not saying that everybody has to do it Spray tans are kind of like this for me. Um, I feel like I would just recommend a light self tanner and doing that at home, testing it out, seeing how you like it. I obviously really like the Beauty by Earth self tanner, which is a natural and organic self tan. I have information for that below if you guys want it. And I think I have a code for some money off too. And this is not to try to sell it to you guys like in any form, but I just really highly recommend it. It's not an orangey based tan. It gives you a very natural, subtle tan also it's just a natural and clean product. So I'm always gonna recommend that because most of the time that's what I try to recommend to people. It's just something that is a little bit more like thoughtful of the ingredients. If you wanna do a spray tan by all means, 100%, without a doubt, try it first. If you can, if you're doing a bridal trial, which we're gonna talk about, do that before your bridal trial. And then that way, when you get your makeup done by the makeup artist, you guys already know what tone you're gonna be. And then, because nine times out of 10, your makeup artist is gonna be writing all of this down. I have face charts where I write everything down and have a note of everything that I need to remember for that particular bride. So that the day of, I can whip my little chart out, give it a once over, 
and just get kind of refreshed on what's going on with this bride because I have so many appointments booking and that keeps it all organized. But if you are a completely different color on your wedding day, then the bronzer is going to change. Maybe the blush will even change depending on the undertone. Your lipstick color will change. So just make sure if you're getting spray tan, if you plan on getting spray tan for your wedding, try to be the same tone for your trial as when you are going to be getting married. Every bride, I recommend a trial. Every single bride, if they ask. I, I, if they say, should I, do you think I need it? Yes, <laughs> I say yes. Unless you're a really low maintenance bride, we do have a little like shotgun wedding place where you can just walk up and get married at this little walk-up chapel here in Seattle. And so a lot of people who do those like to go to the salon Summer owns because it's very close by to that. And so we do get bookings for these little quickie weddings and they're not gonna plan a trial. They just want their makeup done so that they can walk over to that little wedding and chapel and get a quick marriage. So those types of brides, I'm usually pretty okay with not doing a trial but if this is a big wedding and you're getting a dress and you've got bridesmaids and there's like a whole thing you're doing the whole traditional wedding get a trial If you're hiring a makeup artist with experience, then yes, they're gonna be the pro and the expert on makeup and what is going to look good on you, but they're not a mind reader and they don't know you at all. So what is your taste? What is your style? What are your preferences? Some people are boho at heart. Some people are old Hollywood. Some people have a little gothy edge to them. We don't know this. We don't even know sometimes before the trial, even what you look like unless you've sent photos of yourself. It's very, very helpful to do a little bit of research before your trial or your wedding day if you're gonna not do a trial to have an idea of what you like so go on Pinterest I always say that's the best place type in your personal style gothic glam makeup bride we're gonna go with probably the most common bridal looks if you don't tell us if you don't tell us what you want we're just gonna say traditional bride. We're going to go peachy or we're going to go pinky. And that is going to be the two colors that we're going to stick with and like a champagne eye because we don't know you. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a mean way at all. It's just you would not believe how many times I've gone to a wedding and they've literally thought I could read their mind and that I'm just going to work magic on them. And there's so many looks in the world. Just imagine how many varieties of ways makeup can go. Tell your MUA if you don't like something on the spot at the trial. Or if you feel weird telling her, hopefully she's cool and chill and is like, sure, yeah, whatever you want, because that's how I am. When I'm doing your makeup and you're like, oh, I don't know if that's, okay, let's change it. You don't like that lip? Okay, let's change it. Usually bridal makeup can take an hour to an hour and a half, maybe even sometimes two hours, depending on how intense your makeup, depending on how involved your makeup is and how glam you're going. So you wanna make sure you have plenty of time to make these adjustments. And if you want to text them, afterwards after you've had time I usually tell them go enjoy your day you know if we've done it morning or afternoon look at it take some photos send it to your sister send it to your mom send it to your friend kind of feel it out and then look at the photos the next day and then think about it and text them maybe I want to change this and maybe I want to change that your bridal MUA can make those adjustments and changes on your chart and that way they will have that in mind for the wedding day. I think we've covered a lot of the stuff that leads up to the wedding. I feel like I can do a 24 hour long video about all the things that I can think of but at least we've got the stuff out of the way about leading up to the wedding day. Now let's talk about the wedding day and things that will be useful and helpful for you to prepare for that. If you can, let everybody that plans on visiting you in your bridal suite or wherever you're getting makeup done, let them all know minimal conversation with me, please. If you can just give those duties to somebody else, hand your phone to somebody else or let them know that, you know, put it in airplane mode and let them know you're not gonna respond to them for the next hour and a half because this is your time. This is the calm before the storm moment where everything's about to get really nuts. You're gonna be, I mean, in a good way, like a fun way. All of this stuff whirlwind is gonna go so fast in a blink of an eye, your wedding will be there and happening and you'll be walking down the aisle and it's leading up to that is this almost, time slowing peacefulness. 
that you really, really want to enjoy. Do not let somebody ruin that for you. So make sure you tell your family, do not come in and try making me cry. You want to at least get all your, all your photos, if you're getting your photos taken by a professional wedding photographer, are gonna be either before or after the ceremony, and that's when your makeup is gonna look its best. And that's why they do it at that time. They do it as soon as you're ready, they go do the wedding photos, usually before the wedding. So just make sure that nobody tries to infiltrate the beautiful makeup moment before you're photographed. A lot of times I find I'm doing makeup in a hotel suite, a bridal suite at a venue. They have actual designated bridal suites or just a space within the venue next to a very nice window. So that's kind of what you want to think about. You want to have a spot in front of a window where the natural light is because yes, your wedding makeup artist should have some lighting. I have a little light that I bring and I usually don't use it because I don't want to. I don't want to have to rely on this because they're going to be outside and they're going to be in natural light the entire day. I don't want the makeup to be done for studio lighting. I want it to be done for face to face and then photographed as well. So there's some things we consider for photographing. The blush will usually be a little bit more, you know, on point, the concealer, the flashback. I actually don't have one, but I've been meaning to get a travel director's chair because I often find there's never seating for what I need. I need them to be up high and directly in front of me so I can get the angles that I need to on the bride. And nine times out of 10, it's hotel chairs that are very low to the ground. Sometimes they're even recliners. It's like, no. So I need to get a director's chair. It's on the list of things to add but having that designated spot for your artist is going to be so helpful and having that area a little bit cleared out so they have somewhere to put their stuff. I have gone to wedding party like bridal suites where every single tabletop and surface had something set up for them to get ready which is like a bucket of champagne and a bunch of cups and a charcuterie board and like all of their makeup and all their stuff and purses but no one has even thought that like maybe <laughs> the bridal makeup is gonna need a surface to put their stuff on so i usually have to get in there and clear everything and say hey can i move this and i'm like who can i talk to everybody's talking everybody's busy hey can i move this and you don't want to have to rearrange the furniture when you get there so if you can have it ready for them that would be a very useful and helpful thing to do before the wedding begins if if you can delegate that to someone else. If you're a bride and you're like, I can't even think about that kind of stuff. Make one of your bridesmaids do it for you if you can. Say, hey, could you please make a spot for the makeup artist? Make sure it's in front of a window and just give them a little table space or something to put all of their stuff. Now that we've talked about the actual wedding day and all of those things, let's talk about payment and reviews. It is, you have no idea how helpful, it is so helpful to leave a good review for your makeup artist. If she has a website that has a review system, Google, if they have a Google where they have reviews, or email it to them so that they can use it on their website. On my website, I have a few reviews that are in rotation and I'm actually just gonna start working on adding those to my website so that you can see what brides are saying about their services and not just brides, but any sort of like professional service that I provide. I wanna have all of those on there. And you're helping other brides know whether or not they can trust this artist and if that's what you recommend. Do you recommend this to another bride? Do you wanna help another bride who's like you were at one point, completely confused and not sure who to pick and God, I hope I'm making the right decision. You could give them a little bit of reassurance that, hey, I had a great experience with this person. You would love them. Reviews help so much. Just switched out my battery, so hopefully everything looks the same. A lot of times we like send you off <laughs> like a little bird out of a nest, goodbye have fun and we leave. We don't get to see the wedding. We don't get to experience any of it. Your family and all of you go off to do this amazing life-changing thing. And then we're like, later, <laughs> we get into our car with our kit. Usually go, <sighs> Now I'm not gonna go ahead and like spill what rates should be because it depends on where you live. I live near Seattle, Washington, so the rates are probably higher than where they would be if you were somewhere that's not a metropolis. But if you live somewhere where it's a smaller city and a larger city, whatever, there's probably gonna be a deposit. The, po the deposits for any MUA who is scheduling out for bridal stuff, 
more and more now especially, our schedules are starting to fill up right before our eyes. And those days are prime real estate. Saturdays and Sundays are prime bridal wedding real estate. And at this point, it's almost becoming year round. It just is a little bit more incentive for people to stick to that date that has been agreed upon. Uh, but just know if you're watching this and if you're a bride and you pay that deposit, you're not going to get that back. It's that's non refundable to hold that date and time from the makeup artist's schedule so that nobody else can book that. So make sure that when you are booking your bridal MUA that you're going to their website and you're reading everything because they will have details on there. They're going to have rules as far as when it comes to your deposits and what that if that deposit applies towards anything. Um, my deposit is for my travel and the kit cost. So whatever lashes that I'm going to be paying for and bringing whatever supplies I had to re-up and replenish in order to do the wedding then this helps cover that. So that will go towards the kit cost and then whatever you charge for the day of the wedding is whatever you charge for the day of the wedding. Usually the brides cost more than the bridesmaids because they are longer appointments and they're more involved. Whew, okay, <laughs> that is it. I hope that answered questions for brides. I hope that helped makeup artists too if they're just thinking, yeah, you know, how does this work if you're new getting into it and you're just curious how things tend to work. These are just some really helpful tips for brides to kind of get their head there and thinking how this is all going to go down because it is a lot. It's a lot to think about and there's probably a million questions going around in your head. So maybe just a little video like this will clear up some of those questions and then ask your makeup artist. I don't mind answering questions. If somebody is one of my clients and they have a million questions, I'm like, yes, please. I would prefer just a phone call. <laughs> just give me a call. We'll talk it through or we'll talk about it at the trial because you know you need to be doing those trials. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Happy wedding season, my favorite time of year. And please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Thank you.